Hey, this is Aaron from Night Combat Solutions. Today I'm going to talk about Armacite's line of I-squared clip-on night vision devices. Before I get into the merits of each individual unit, I'd like to take a minute to talk about day scopes. You can't really use a cheap $40 day scope and expect good results out of a clip-on device. You're going to get cheap results. Now you notice that all of them are, are drastically different in appearance, but there are certain things they have in common, such as they're all guaranteed to be collimated within one MOA, meaning you're not going to get a POI shift that's greater than one minute of angle. They also all have the ability to use either a single AA or a single CR123 simply by flipping it around, around an adapter in the battery cap. They also all come with certain accessories such as an illuminator, now this illuminator has a variable power output and a base that allows you to move it to line up with the image you're seeing in your clip-on. It's an excellent illuminator and I like it ex exceptionally well for helmet mounting because of those features. And for the, the CO Mini it's a great option, but when you start getting into the CO MR you might look at say the, the W version, the IR850W. And the reason for that is it has twice the output and it has a focusable beam from 2 to 20 degrees. Once you get up into the COLR, if you're going to use it uh, at the distances that it's capable of, out to a thousand yards, you need to start looking at at other illuminators to add to, to this, such as uh, if, if you're military LE and you have access to restricted laser illuminators, that's absolutely the best, such as on the PEQ-2 or the PEQ-15 or some of the other ones out there. If you don't have access to those, look at the Torch, the LDI Spear, or the Luna laser illuminators. There's several out there that will give you the range you need to get out there. But you do have to have an illuminator that will give you the reach if you're planning on shooting at those distances. Now on most nights you're not going to need it. If you have any stars or moon you're going to be perfectly fine without running an illuminator at all. And in a lot of situations that's best. If you're, if you're in a job where you have an adversary that might have night vision you need to take every precaution possible and that includes not using active IR illumination because they're going to, you're going to stand out like a sore thumb. For hunting, I actually like to run an illuminator even if I don't need it because it causes the animal's eyes to shine just as a spotlight would. So it makes picking out those animals uh, in a field that's all basically two colors through the night vision much easier. The CO Mini is one of the smallest, lightest clip-ons out there. It's good for about 4x magnification is where it's absolutely crisp. You can go up to 6x, but you do start to lose some of that clarity at 6x, and beyond that, you lose, a, you lose a lot of that clarity. Like the other ones, it has a QD base, uh, can use multiple batteries, uh, but that's really where the similarities stop with this. The Armacite says it's a 150 meter uh, clip on it. and the reason for that is because it doesn't have external focus and the low magnification that it's set for. It's the, the focus is set from the factory at about 100 yards and it, so there's no external focus and that's one of the reasons that it's so small and light but if an object's extremely close or extremely far you're not going to be able to fine tune the focus. With that said, the focus is close enough to infinity that objects at distances much greater than 150 are clear. It's just that you don't have the magnification to go and get proper ID on targets that are extremely far off. But you can engage targets that are 300 yards away. It's just that you're going to have to do it with 4x magnification. And that can be troublesome for some people. But if you have the ability, then by all means you can do it but it's really designed for CQB distances or the distances you're going to encounter hunting in the woods or a swamp. If you need more range and magnification than that, the COMR or the COX is a great choice. This is the COMR. The COX is also made by Armacite and has very similar capabilities, but it does have some differences. It uses a Catlin system, so it's shorter, a shade lighter, but other than that, they're very similar. It's a little bit more aesthetically uh, appealing than the COMR, but most of us aren't really concerned about that. 
Like the others, it's collimated within one MOA, has the QD base, and can take multiple batteries. But once again, that's kind of where the similarities stop. It's got a paddle type focus knob, much like the CNV DLR or the PVS24. I really like that on this particular optic because I'm going to run it on an AR generally with a shorter day scope like a USO 1.5 to 6 or an ACOG where reaching over that scope is not a problem and I'm probably not going to be shooting it in the prone. So it's easy to get to and in the dark you can feel the lever really easily and move it and adjust the focus. It's focusable from 10 yards to infinity. So pretty much any target you need to see you're going to be able to focus on it. It's good for up to about 7x magnification with absolute clarity. Beyond that it does start to get a little fuzzy. I've had customers say they run it up to 10x. Personally, I usually leave it on the USO. I leave it at 6 uh, on my 3 to 17. Sometimes I'll go to 7. Uh, but it's, it's right around that range where you're going to get the best magnification out of it. Another positive side of that is you can run it down all, all the way down to 1.5x and still get a great image and get that wider field of view. Now this particular one is a Gen 2 white phosphor unit, but all the Armasite clip-ons have the ability to take a wide variety of tubes. Uh, multiple Gen 2 offerings like the SD, the ID, the HD, white phosphor, and I'll get into all those different options and explain them better on another video. But it also has a wide variety of Gen 3 tubes like the Bravo, the Alpha, the Pinnacle, Filmless Autogated. And once again, you can get a white phosphor Gen 3 tube in this unit, as well as the others. With that said, the, the distances really de that you get out of it really depend on what tube you use. Uh, with any of the Gen 3 tubes, they're all really good. You're going to get about four to 500 yards. Uh, the Pinnacle is the most popular because of its reputation, and it is an outstanding tube, and they seem to get better all the time. Uh, so what, let's just say with the Pinnacle you're looking at a 500 yard optic and once again that's not because you can't focus it farther than that it's because of the magnification limitation. If you have the skills or the ability to reach out and get a target at nighttime under those conditions with 7x well beyond 500 the unit's capable of it if you are but for me it's a 4 to 500 yard optic because I could only use it with about 7x magnification. Now the COLR is by far my most popular unit that I sell and the reason for that is because typically a, a unit that has these capabilities is going to cost eight to twelve thousand dollars rather than the, the four to five that this does depending on your tube options or even less if you go with some of the Gen 2 tubes. But for the intents and purposes of a COLR uh, with long range being its number one attribute Gen 3 is highly recommended, uh, and especially like a Pinnacle or Filmless Autogated tube. It's capable out to about a thousand yards or even more depending on conditions. And it's usable with up to 12x magnification with absolute clarity and beyond that if you don't mind a little bit of fuzz in the picture. And it, I will say once again, this is where a quality day scope really comes in. You can't expect to, to have, be shooting excellent thousand yard groups uh, with a cheap scope, let alone at night that's amplified. And you're already losing some light with a clip-on uh, when you run it in conjunction with your day optic because you're pulling light through two optics. So you, especially when you're shooting longer range or under more adverse conditions, make sure you're using a good day scope with your clip-on. That said, like the rest of them, uh, it's guaranteed to be collimated within one MOA and that's extremely important on the COLR because of the distances involved. One inch at 100 yards isn't a big deal to miss by, but 10 to 20 inches at, at 1,000 is a big deal. And all of the COLRs I've used have been collimated within much closer tolerances than that. Most of them are a half MOA and that's excellent because I like to be able to still use the dope that's on my rifle without having to change a zero. So that's a huge attribute to this. The other two units only have one QD locking lever, uh, which is perfectly fine for them because they're rock solid with that one lever. The COLR being bigger and cantilevered out a little farther has two locking levers and it provides a really solid lockup. Now one of the great things about these bases is that you can adjust the tension in the field with no tools. 
and that's important for me because if I need to adjust something in the field that requires a tool, I guarantee you I won't have that tool on me or I'll drop it and not find it. So all you do is you put it with the lever on the open position, push against the side with the lever, it exposes the nut on the opposite side, turn it until you have the tension you need and let it go. And most of you that have used this kind of gear, or, or even various optics, day optics, you'll know that not all rails are in spec or, or even really close. So that's an important feature. And you'll notice on the COLR, the gain control and the focus knobs are in different positions than they are on the MR. And even though I really like the controls on the MR, it's important that these are where they're at on the LR as well. Typically you're going to be running a COLR on a platform that has a larger day scope that's much longer. I run it with the US Optics 3 to 17. Now you can run it just fine with an ACOG and it provides an excellent picture. And then these control positionings aren't so important. But what you're, when you're running it on a longer platform with a longer day scope, it's going to be hard to reach over and adjust the focus if it's on the top, especially if you're in the prone or shooting from an improvised rest or from a non-traditional -trad shooting position. So in those types of situations, it's much easier to just reach over to the back and adjust your focus there. Your gain control, which you're not going to have to play with near as much in the field, and, and I almost never do mess with the gain in the field, uh, is on the top. And it's still not too bad because for a right-hand shooter like myself, it's on the left side, I can reach around and get it. Now, the power switch is on the left side, which I also like, and it has down is on, the middle is off, and up is standby. And a lot of people ask me what the standby position is for, and you'll notice it's on all three of these clip-ons. When you put the unit in standby, it's not powered up, but you can use a wireless pressure switch that comes with the units and mount it anywhere you want. You could mount it anywhere on the weapon. I prefer as far forward as I can on most rifles, uh, but on a precision rifle I usually put it on the buttstock uh, to where I can get it when I'm in that supported position. It allows you to put the unit on standby and then only momentarily activate it when needed. And I really like that feature for when I'm running helmet mounted nods or a handheld thermal scanner because I'm going to have one of those two units on at pretty much all times and I'm going to locate targets with them and then only engage with the clip-ons. So in that situation there's no need to leave the clip-on on all night just in case you see a target. Put it on standby and just activate it when you need to engage a target. With that said, even though I have, you know, the COLR is the most popular, I generally run the COMR or the COX for myself. And the reason being, I generally hunt with a small frame AR in, in 223, 6x45, 6.5 Grendel, so on. And I'm usually running a shorter day optic like the USO 1.5 to 6 or an ACOG or the Trigicon 1 to 4. So with those day optics and a 15 inch rail, I can put the COMR on my rifle and still have an IR laser uh, in the 12 o'clock position up front where I like it or a folding front sight. And in, in my terrain, in the Ozarks, I don't have shots that exceed the capabilities of the COMR. So for me, a lot of times there's no point in having the added length and weight of a COLR and having to remove my lasers or sights on the front of the rail. But I do shoot long range, it's just not typically in a hunting environment. So keep that in mind if you're looking for something for a smaller platform to carry around and hunt with at shorter distances. Uh, if you do need that extended range, then by all means, the COLR doesn't really have any drawbacks and it will perform right with units that cost eight to $12,000. For instance, we put tubes with almost the exact same specs in a PVS-27 which is pricey, and the COLR. And nobody present could tell the difference in image quality. And that says a lot because the 27 is a really capable unit. And some people might think that, well, because it's less, the quality is going to be less. That's not necessarily the case. All the clip-on units are waterproof and made to meet mil-spec 810 requirements for durability. And one of the other downsides to what is t for typically uh, cheaper clip-on units is that they don't hold collimation or they're not collimated properly in the first place. 
that's not an issue with these. Uh, I run them on the COLR and a 300 Win Mag and a 338, and I've never had an issue with losing collimation. So Armacite's really worked out a lot of the issues that have typically plagued cheaper clip-on units and brought a unit that's affordable, robust, and completely usable to the market. And people have been asking for that for a long time, and there's been companies try to produce that, but I really feel like the COLR is the first one that has those capabilities of the really high-end units without the price tag.